Hey y'all, I'm excited to share this new art tutorial with you. We're making these. My first problem though is how do you say it? Geode or geode? If you know, please comment below. <laughs> So these paintings are super easy to do. They're on canvas paper instead of canvas, and they're done with acrylic paints. I originally did this with a group of middle and high schoolers, and so get your older kids involved as well. Um, if you are just by yourself, this is totally um, a great project to do to keep your mind um, active and your creativity engaged. Um, I'm so excited to show you these. I actually have them around my um, art studio, so being halves, I place them underneath different shelves and straight um, horizontal objects to kind of accentuate and give them a little bit of a, a background and interest to them. Um, they're super colorful. You can tailor them to your house colors uh, or favorite colors, whatever you want. Um, and you can also, if you prefer, make an oval shaped one instead of a half. So let's get to it. So all you need for materials are a thick piece of paper. Um, this is actually canvas paper. I, I get a huge stack of it at Walmart and it's about like $7. Um, it's a great way to paint um, if you don't want to like waste canvas, you can try things. Um, so that's a super great purchase. If you don't have canvas paper with you, you can use um, something thick like watercolor paper. Um, or a cardstock. Um, you could even use the back of like uh, an old cereal box or um, something paper-like. Um, I just wouldn't recommend using like thin printer paper or notebook paper because it'll wrinkle with the acrylic paint. I also have um, three paint brushes. One is um, a little bit thicker and a medium and a small. And um, a little glass of water, paper towel, um, and then I use a paper plate for a palette because it's really easy to clean up. You can just throw it away. Um, and I have uh, paints from several different brands here, um, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but what's important for your palette for this project is that you select one main color. I think it looks best uh, to try right away using one main color, and in my case, that's red, pink. Um, and then I add in white and then a sparkly. So you can see if you can find um, like a gold or a silver uh, or a bronze. Um, you could probably also fake it if you have glitter around and want to use it up. I don't know who has glitter around, but um, sometimes I do. Um, and then the white is to blend things into the background. So good paints. Um, I have a whole bunch of different types. These are just like 75 cents at any craft store and um, like Michaels or Hobby Lobby, uh, Walmart. Um, and then these are my artist quality um, paints. I get them from Crayola, so it's really easy. So those are the thicker ones, they're artist quality, and the thinner ones are um, from these cheaper ones. But either way, um, all of them work. We're just using them as paint today. So let's get started. Oh yeah, and you'll use a pencil. So take that pencil and basically sketch, you know, like a, a half circle kind of shape, but make it not regular. So if you're like, oh man, I can't draw circles, um, that's okay, because a circle, perfect circle won't look good as a geode. So kind of make it like some ragged edges, some ins and outs, and that'll be perfect. Cool. So let's get started with the inside of the geode. So as you can see with this geode, um, it's like a, it's darker and then it has rims of different colors that get a little bit lighter and then have some darker rings. And then this one, this last ring is definitely more erratic, so we'll change that. We'll start from the inside out and go from there. So I'm using the medium of my brushes. This is a number number six brush if you are acquainted with the sizes. Um, but I'm just going to start with my darkest color, so in that case, that would be my dark red. So you're kind of making like a, not really a straight line and not really a shape here. Just kind of an inside shape. Um, and we'll put some sparklies in there. Then you can wash your brush in between colors, or you can keep your brush dirty, and then the paint, the new paint you add, 
we'll kind of combine those colors. I chose to wash my brush for this one. So um, I'm going to do like a layer of this lighter pink outside of this one. And now I'll keep my brush dirty so I can show you. I'll use the lightest pink. You can kind of see the, the two pinks blending. Ooh, it's already looking really cool. Um, so then maybe I'll go back to the medium, medium pink. I'll wash my brush and go back to the dark pink, dark red. Now you can see in this jade, I start kind of following the patterns of the, the first black shape that I made, but then I start to kind of increase on different sides so that the shape changes. It's not, you know, following a perfect rainbow all the way. So maybe on this side, I'll make it a little bit thicker. Start following that one. And I think I'll repeat that same pattern, medium, light, medium. science to this. Each jad is really different. Jad, jad. Um, and so yours should definitely be different than mine and every single one that I do should definitely be different than the previous one I've done. So um, try to, you know, kind of have fun with it. Make several. Um, change your, your primary colors that you're using Not each time until you have a whole collection. Um, I like doing halves and halves because you can kind of like line them up next to each other a really cool display next to it. Um, but you can do a whole one as well. Um, you'll just have to put it smaller so that it fits onto the paper. Here I'll increase these sides. And in this wet one I'll kind of add in some white just to add some variation to our pattern. And that's just without washing my brush it kind of just blends with the brush. Remember to, remember to change the shape as you go around. So here I'm kind of bringing it in, increasing these corners. So this last round I'm adding a little bit more paint than I have in the other one, so it's a little bit more thick. And we'll actually work with it to turn it into a more speculative layer. So next I'm going to change to my thinner brush. And this is a brush 2, size 2. Um, and I'll dip it into that same color on the last one. And basically what I'm going to do is make little arches. <laughs> now these arches should not all be similar. Um, they shouldn't be the same height as each other and they shouldn't be the same width. So these two ended up being the same width so I'll make one a little bit farther away next to it. Maybe one a little bit closer next to that one. Um, and I'm using kind of the paint that's already there plus blending the new paint that I'm putting on to add to it. A really tall one, that one, this one's more medium, this one's more close to it. And they can kind of point different ways too. One can point in, one can point the other way, the other way. 
These are just kind of mimicking how the crystals form in that more glass-like part of the geode versus the crystal-like part. And if your brush starts to show those like brush marks, um, that means that your brush is too dry. So um, that means you can get more paint or you can dip it a little tiny bit in the water. Okay, so we'll kind of add to this um, flowy part by adding the lighter color. Um, and going alongside of it. So it's almost like it's blending into uh, the white of the geode. And I'm working fairly quickly, so um, the paint's still wet, and that actually allows me to blend better um, so that it's not all dry next to each other as a start line. Um, but you can always wet, you know, if you want these two places to blend, you can always wet it with more of uh, this color and then add more of this color and then it can blend again. Alright, so next we'll use our um, white to start blending into the background. Um, so this step is kind of optional because you're painting over already white places, but you can get a lot of cool effects by blending a little bit better, so I'll show you a little bit. Um, so I'm just doing a patch here of white and not going around to the whole thing because I want it to stay wet. So still with white on my brush, you know, because it's good to blend. Um, I'm adding in more pink, I got light pink, and so it's kind of blending a little bit more and that gives it more of that glass feel. Okay, so back to white. to see on camera the white but all I'm doing is a light layer so it's not a ton of extra paint or work. And uh, in between these you know the the spikes of color I, you can add more color too you know this light pink um, adding in kind of more spikes but more faint ones. It gives more depth to your glass kind of look. And because there's white already there, it blends perfectly into that background. Geodes, geodes, <laughs> geodes. They are never ever regular, so having a part that's different, um, it's totally fine. Okay, so next we're gonna do this kind of outside um, ring here. So it's kind of like this part is glassy, and then this part is glassy, and then this part is a little bit more crystallized in the, the actual jam. So let's do that. So I'm actually going to start with a white layer along the outside. So when I did white before, I only did like that much. So I do a little bit so that it makes blending easier. Okay, and I'm only doing it over half again so that it doesn't dry. Use that wet stuff. So 
I used the medium brush, you can use the bigger brush for that white. Next we're going to go into the smaller brush though because we're going to do these kind of light strokes. And they're like stripes that go all the way through. So just pick out a couple areas you want to put them in. Onto that white paint. So I'm only doing a couple different areas. Next we'll go to our medium brush and do more kind of darker spikes. So here I'm going to brush up from the center of the geode. Um, and I shouldn't be doing it in a perfect circle. I should be going higher and lower, higher and lower. Mostly brushing up, sometimes I brush down just because I <laughs> do it accidentally, but brushing up will give uh, more of a dramatic effect. And back over places that are a little bit lighter, too light. Okay, so let's do the same on the other side. Let's use our bigger brush. White paint. Ooh, this brush is a little bit hard. <laughs> I'm just swirling it around. There's no perfect technique. Now I'm doing this fairly fast um, because I am a, a professional artist, so I, I paint a lot, so don't be intimidated by my pace. I just want to make sure that I keep your attention and get you through this video so that you can make your own along with me. Um, by using the space bar, you can, you can stop and start as you need, or um, so you can watch it all the way through and then try it on your own. Okay. So here's the white. So again, small brush, lightest one. We're doing those erratic strokes. Um, these are softer ones. Now the more dramatic ones in the medium with the medium brush. If you're having trouble with this part, um, consider that how hard you push with the brush um, changes the brush stroke that you get. So if you push really hard, it's a thicker line. You push not as hard, it's a thinner line. So when I'm doing these, usually I'm pushing harder at the bottom and then releasing a little bit as I go up. So that went on the ridge. Harder and then less, okay, less, okay, less. Um, and that's what produces that kind of shape. So I'm going to soften a little bit of the lines, they're really nice and contrasting, but sometimes it's a little too much. So I'm going to do that in different places using the lightest color, kind of brushing up with the color. And the paint's still wet, so it's blending really nicely. Awesome. So the only thing that's different between here and here is there's a dark line along here with the blue. So um, what I'm going to do is take my light color with my smallest brush and basically draw a line that's going along. So I'm using very light strokes so that I can get a nice thin line. And I'm kind of just following, like tracing the line that I painted. Now here you can cover a multitude of sins, meaning if you went too far with this medium color line, um, you can use your darker line and paint it higher. Or um, if you didn't go far enough down, you can use your dark line and paint it lower. Um, so here's a good way to correct anything you don't like. But I also challenge you to suspend judgment until it's done, because you really don't know how it will turn out. 
And I noticed too that mostly I'm brushing up, so I'm kind of meeting the corners um, from the bottom. And that helps instead of drawing like up, down, up, down, up, down. Your paintbrush kind of has a lag in it that doesn't give you a very clear line. Um, so painting up and up on each V um, gives me a, a more clear line. A little bit more, and this angle is a little awkward for me, so what I'm going to do is just turn it upside down. And I'm just do the V painting here, so I'm doing kind of like little Vs. One side, one side, one side, one side. And that gives me that nice sharp line, kind of up and down. Cool. Now, from here I noticed too that there's some in the, in the red parts that it's a little bit thin. Um, depending on the paint you're working with and you know how much water you use you might also have thin parts so here you can kind of go over those parts again with the second coat okay back right side up let's finish off this adorable piece by using our sparklies. So this might be gold, this might be silver for you. This could be um, Elmer's glue with a paintbrush dipped in and then sprinkle um, glitter on top. Whatever you think looks awesome, do that. I suppose too, if you were, like, if you didn't have much glittery paint, you could probably use a uh, nail polish. It has that shimmer in it. So here I'm painting um, not a perfect line, I'm making some parts thicker and some parts thinner, and I'm doing that by adjusting the pressure I put on my brush. So here's thick and thin, um, or by you know doing a second coat next to it. Now in this middle part here, that's where I added some gold. Um, so that's in the glass area and we want it to be smooth and erratic. So how I'm gonna do that is adding some water to it. So I have paint on and I have water. So I'll add that to the paint over here. So I've kind of made a watery sort of mix. Um, and I'm just gonna paint a little bit along these insides. Maybe a little bit up and kind of making dots. Hard to explain, but um, just try different things, see what works for you. Um, you don't have to do it in every single little portion, too. You can make little circles, you know, where the crystals kind of congregated. You can do all kinds of things. So again, I'm using watered down paint to do this so that it's not very harsh kind of looking. So it could look harsh, um, and if you want it to look harsh, you can uh, invert the water. You can put some sparklies up here in that second layer at different points. It doesn't have to be uniform, again, because nothing about nature is uniform, but everything about nature is gorgeous. I'm pulling some of these up just because I think it looks better. There's more space in between this one, and so I think this one being so close with less white space, um, it makes more sense visually if they kind of meet sometimes. Okay, 
right, so next let's do this inside. So this is a crystallized part of the geode. So um, we're gonna use just little tiny dots. So you can like kind of build up the paint so that it's not flat, you know, there's like, ridges. That looks the coolest because it almost mimics wet painting. And again, I didn't paint a straight line down. Um, I painted kind of inside it, all a little bit. Um, I think you can add, you know, a little bit of crystals on the sides of, of some of the layers um, if you want. It's totally up to you. Those crystals do get. Cool. So from here you can just revise, you know, what do you not like, um, what do you like, and kind of ask yourself why. So um, I really like how this turned out actually. So I'm going to let it dry and then um, I can choose to keep it on this piece of canvas, but I, I really like cutting them out. Um, I think they could do cool shapes and you can put them, you know, next to a window or, you know, underneath like a shelf um, somehow. So um, experiment, um, let me know what works for you. If you have any questions, definitely comment below. Um, and if you want, you can send your artwork to me um, by a private message. Um, so just find me on Facebook or Instagram and send your pictures over, I'd love to see. Thanks so much for watching. If you know somebody who would enjoy this project, please share it with them. And if you liked it, give me a like on this video and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to do more art tutorials, and so liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing, all of it helps me get my work out there and enables me to do more videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.